Hello, everybody. Welcome to the weekly Charlton Athletic Community Trust online quiz. Hope you've had a, a fantastic week. Hope you've had a, a good day. The weather out there has certainly been very nice. You can probably see me being a little bit red. I was outside with the kids. And I was thinking, don't let the sun go down, but it looks like it probably will. Um, look, this is being streamed live, so please bear with us if there are any technical problems. If you're not or this is your first time uh, this week and you haven't been with us in the previous weeks, why are we doing this? Well, firstly, we want to provide an opportunity for people to get together virtually or in their households for some fun and a distraction from what's going on around the world at the moment. Secondly, we're raising funds for CAC's work, supporting vulnerable people during the current crisis. CACT is working with the Royal Borough of Greenwich to run the community hub there. Staff are taking hundreds of calls a day on the call centre, organising shopping, at deliveries of food parcels, collecting prescriptions and referring people to other local services. CACT has also set up a friendship line offering regular calls to those who are self-isolating. Its Extra Time weekly group for older people is now running its choir and holding weekly tea groups online to reduce loneliness. Other CACT programmes have also been adapted to continue providing support. Mentoring is now online and over the phone. The team in Thanet is helping with food deliveries, while CACT football coaches are running daily football skills challenges with support from the first team. Well, this quiz is free to take part in, but anything you can donate will help support CACT's work in the community. For example, CACT is buying food for those who can't afford it, where food banks are unable to help and helping cover any extra costs it has at the moment. You can donate online at cact.org.uk forward slash donate. Alternatively, you can find out more about how to set up a regular gift to help support CAC now and in the future at cact.org.uk forward slash our community. OK, well, how will the quiz work? We have five rounds, really good questions. 10 questions for each round. At the end of the round, I'll give you a short amount of time to go through the questions and then we'll read out the answers for you to mark. Please send us any comments or requests for shout outs to read between the rounds in the comments box. Can be anything about yourselves, about people you're, you're up against in this particular quiz or asking me personal questions uh, about Charlton and my time there as well. Submit your team name and score on the comments or to fundraising at CACT dot org dot uk and we'll publish a leaderboard soon after the end okay the rounds are charles and athletic general knowledge debut scorers history and geography non-european charlton players and the 1988 to 94 era the classic era in charlton's history we can't afford enforce no mobile phones or google but this is for fun to so try and answer the questions by yourselves if you can. OK, are we ready? Let's go with the first one. OK, general knowledge round. Who is the only Charlton player to win three consecutive Player of the Year awards? So who is the only Charlton player to win three consecutive Player of the Year awards? A little clue. It was around about my time, my early time. Um, in fact, I think I won back to back Young Player of the Year awards, but this man won three consecutive Player of the Year awards. Question two Who is Charlton's most capped England international? So, who is Charlton's most capped England international? Question three Who is the most recent Charlton player to hit the 50 goal mark for the club? So who is the most recent Charlton player to hit the 50 goal mark for the club? Question four. What company was Charlton's first ever shirt sponsor? So what company was Charlton's first ever shirt sponsor? Question five, which Charlton player was sent off in the club's first ever Premier League match? Which Charlton player was sent off in the club's first ever Premier League match? OK, going back a bit, circle of life really, isn't it? Keith Peacock, who celebrated his 75th birthday recently, made his debut for Charlton Athletic at the age of 17 
Who were the opponents that day? Keith, do you know? So Keith recently celebrated his 75th birthday. He made his debut for Charlton at the age of 17. Who were the opponents that day? Part of the Canio, I'll tell you what, an absolute rocket man. He was a legend. I played with him at West Ham on and off the pitch. Just uh, one of a kind, without a doubt. Signed for Charlton in the 2003-04 season. How many goals did he score for Charlton? So Palo de Canio signed for Charlton in the 2003-04 season. How many goals did he score for Charlton? Question eight. Name the player who Charlton signed in 2000 from FC Zurich for £2 million. Name the player who Charlton signed in 2000 from FC Zurich for £2 million. Now, I'd like to welcome a very special guest to ask the last two questions for this round. You know who he is. He's a Charlton legend and more recently, excellent assistant manager, Johnny Jackson. Hi everyone, hope you're having a really good evening. I've got two questions for you. So, question nine. Who, in the 2018-19 League One playoff final, was the substitute goalkeeper for Charlton that day in that iconic match? Who was the substitute goalkeeper? And question 10. In what minute did Ben Purrington equalise for Charlton? Okay, so there's your two questions, guys. Hope you're having a great evening. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks, Johnny. He is a Lion King, isn't he? Without a doubt. If you didn't quite catch the first one, I'll go over those two questions anyway. So in the iconic 2018-19 League One player final victory over Sunderland at Wembley, who was the substitute goalkeeper for Charlton that incredible day? And question 10, in which minute did Ben Purrington equalise in that game? OK, so they are the 10 questions of the first round. I'll give you a minute or so to go over them. Make sure you're happy with that. I'll give you a little bit of fact about Cact, and then I'll just mention a few people uh, who have gone on already. So Cact worked with over 43 and a half thousand people in South East London and Kent last year across over 50 projects. That's over 43 and a half thousand people in South East London and Kent over 50 across over 50 projects absolutely fantastic work okay lisa jane impey hello everyone hope you're all staying safe missing the valley we all are aren't we um izzy izzy fraser happy birthday to charlton fanatic matt williams so happy birthday matt hope you're enjoying it i hope you enjoyed the day beautiful day weather wise crazy gymnastics hi scott what is your favourite playoff final game you have ever presented? It's a good question. I think I've done four now. Uh, is it four? Is it three or four? I have to say they've not been great games to watch just because of the absolute pressure that um, that it goes on to. I mean, it's 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 a worth the single that single game is worth over one hundred and seventy million pounds. Um, so can you imagine the pressure on the players? I mean, obviously, Char Charlton players experience that pressure, but the League One, and you can you know times that by 10, really, for the Championship, going up into the Premier League and and the way, what it means for the club as well. So it is the single, in terms of football, it's um, it's the richest game in, in football. Uh, so amount of pressure there. Uh, the Huddersfield Reading wasn't great, even though that went to penalties. Um but Fulham were excellent against Villa and Villa deserved it last year against Derby. So I'd probably say, I think, I think Villa Derby, knowing Frank Lampard, knowing Jody Morris, um, having got to know people at Villa as well, you know, two big clubs in a division, uh, some big names with JT in there as well. I have to say, I think, um, I think that's probably been my favourite one so far. Uh, right, let's go through the answers, shall we? General knowledge answers. Who is the only Charlton player to win three consecutive Player of the Year awards? Gave you a bit of a clue in terms of the time. It was John Humphrey, 88, 89 and 90. 
Question two, who is Charlton's most capped England international? The answer, Luke Young, seven caps. I wonder how many Powell he got. He must be quite close to that, five or six. Question three, who is the most recent Charlton player to hit the 50 goal mark for the club? You just heard from him, Johnny Jackson in 2015. What company was Charlton's first ever shirt sponsor? Now, it was back in 1981. If you get that, I'll give you a bonus point. It, but the answer is Fads. Which Charlton player was sent off in the club's first ever Premier League match? It was Richard Rufus against Newcastle in 1998. Keith Peacock, still standing, who celebrated his 75th birthday recently made his debut for Charlton Athletic at the age of 17. Who were the opponents that day, Keith? He hasn't answered. Uh, they were Sunderland. And he made his debut in place of Stuart Leary in the 1-0 defeat at Roker Park in the 62-63 season. Is that flown by Keith or not? That seemed like a million years ago. Paolo the Canio, absolute legend as a player. Uh, one of the best players I ever played with. Um, put him as number three, actually. Uh, signed for Charlton in the 2003-04 season. How many goals did he score for Charlton? Surprisingly, he had just got the four. So Paolo scored four goals for Charlton. Name the player who Charlton signed in 2000 from FC Zurich for £2 million. Sean Bartlett. And Sean scored the goal of the season in the 2000-2001 season for his volley against Leicester. Question nine. As Johnny asked in the iconic 2018-19 League One player final victory over Sunderland at Wembley, who was the substitute goalkeeper for Charlton that incredible day? Chris Maxwell on loan from Preston. And question 10, in which minute did Ben Purrington equalise in that game? Now, if you get the 35th minute, that's absolutely spot on. I feel like I should give you an extra bonus point for that, really, but certainly half. Uh, if you get within two or three minutes either side, I'll give you that. But the answer was the 35th minute. OK. Round two. Debut scorers. For each of these questions, we're looking for the name of the Charlton player who scored on their debut appearance for the club. I will give you the dates and opponents of each game. You just need to name the player. You just need to know. This is difficult. This is tough. If you get six or seven in this, then you know your stuff and you're quite old. <laughs> Number one, Sheffield Wednesday at home, January 1951. So who scored on their debut appearance for Charlton against Sheffield Wednesday at home, January 1951? Who scored on their debut in May 1966 at home to Norwich? Question three, who scored in their debut, Walsall away, August 1972? I think they get a little bit easier. Question four, Blackburn at home, September 1973. Who scored in their debut, Blackburn at home, September 1973? Question five, into the 80s, who scored in the debut, on his debut um, in November 82? Middlesbrough at home. So who scored in the debut? Middlesbrough at home in November 82. Yes. Question six, Grimsby at home, March 84. Who scored in their debut? Grimsby at home in March 1984. One more from the 80s. Who scored, should count as double this one, on their debut, Millwall away, March 1986. Who scored in his debut, Millwall away, March 1986. Question eight. Who scored in March 1996? Norwich away. Who scored in his debut? 
March 1996, Norwich away. Okay, now we come into this century, so maybe the younger ones will know this one. August 2005, we scored in his debut, Sunderland away. Sunderland away, August 2005. And the last one, Sunderland the way again, August 2018. Who scored in his debut, Sunderland the way, August 2018. Okay, they are the questions for round two. Debut scorers, a cact fact. Mahalo, who took part in a mental health residential trip run by CACT in 2018, told us how much CACT support meant to her. She said, CACT has played a huge part in my recovery in many different ways, and I'm forever grateful for this, and I only hope the same happens for others too. So Mahala, well done, and again, well done to CACT. Okay, where are we up to in terms of mentions? Liam Milton, what do you make of the current ownership situation at the club? How long have we got? Could be here till next week. Um, I said from the start that uh, uh, we need to be careful what we wish for. Um, I hope there's clearly an issue between owner and chairman. Of that, there's no doubt. And I just hope that one of them, and it's got to be the owner really, hasn't it, uh, is able to just give Lee a chance. Because at the moment, he's having both hands tied behind his back. From what he's gone into previously, but at the moment, out of the frying pan, into the fire. And he, the club, and of course the fans deserve so much better than that. Uh, that's what I'll say at the moment. Uh, Bog D. Pantea. Uh, always giving some answers there, aren't you? I can't give you, I can't, I can't mention them. Uh, so we'll move on to Martin. Martin Isted, can you say happy birthday to my daughter, Ellie, who is 20 tomorrow. Ellie, happy birthday tomorrow. I'm told, um, it's going to be a, a lovely day weather-wise, and you celebrate it, of course, VE Day as well. So uh, have a great double celebration. Russell Mears, belated happy birthday, Keith. Indeed. Uh, Luis Mendes, 7.5 for us, 7.5 for us. Team name, dude, where's my Range Rover? Uh, answers on a postcard. Um, send them to the owner and see what he says. Okay. Let's give the answers now, shall we? Tough ones, aren't they, in the beginning? Um, so debut scorers. Who scores on his debut January 1951, Sheffield Wednesday at home? Hans Jepsen. Norwich at home, May 66, Peter Reeves. Walsall away, August 72, Arthur Horsfield. Might be a bit of an easier one, this one, but certainly a massive name. Do they come much bigger? Blackburn at home, September 73. Halsey. Legends. Middlesbrough at home, November 82. Alan Siemenson, what a player. Another great player here as well. Grimsby at home, March 84. Rob Lee. Question seven. Millwall away, March 86. Jim Melrose. Norwich away, March 96, Bradley Allen. Sunderland away, August 2005, Darren Bent. Good lads, very good pundit as well. And question 10 had to be Sunderland away, August 2018. There's only one, Lyle Taylor. So let's move on to the history and geography round. It's a tough one, this one as well, but uh, how much do you know of round about Charlton? The history and geography of Charlton, the area. In 1874, a famous or infamous annual fair held on St Luke's Day, which was the 18th of October in Charlton, was suppressed because of, because of drunken and unruly behaviour of the fairgoers. What was the name of the fair? Would Stewie Barmer have been around then? <laughs> if he was, he would have been involved, I'm sure. In 1874, a famous or infamous annual fair held on St. Luke's Day, October 18, in Charlton, was suppressed because of drunken and unruly behaviour of the fairgoers. What was the name of the fair? 
over my head. Question two, a famous German company once had a large factory in the River Thames at Charlton making cables and telephone equipment. They're now more well known for making mobile phones. What was the name of the company? So a famous German company once had a large factory in the River Thames at Charlton making cables and telephone equipment. They are now more well known for making mobile phones. What was the name of the company? Question three. The only British Prime Minister to have been assassinated is buried in Charlton. What was his name? Now, it was the answer to a question in a quiz a few weeks ago. We have got a, a multiple choice here for you. Spencer Davis, Stanley Spencer, Spencer Percival or Lord Spencer? So I think it's fair to say Spencer is in it. A, Spencer Davis, B, Stanley Spencer, C, Spencer Percival or D, Lord Spencer? He's just a candle in the wind. Question four. The Thames Barrier in Charlton protects London from flooding. In which decade did it open? So the Thames Barrier in Charlton protects London from flooding. In which decade did it open? The 70s, 80s, 90s or the noughties? So again, a choice of four. 70s, 80s, 90s or the noughties? Question five, there is a blue plaque on a house near the bottom of Charlton Church Lane that many of you will have passed on the way to the valley for a Tory Smith, also known as Italo Sfero. What was his profession? So there's a blue plaque on a house near the bottom of Charlton Church Lane that many of you will have passed on the way to the valley for a Tory Smith, also known as Italo Sfero. What was his profession. Question six. Last weekend should have been Charlton's last game of the season against Leeds. If you had traveled there by train from London, what train company would you have been using? So last weekend should have been Charlton's last game of the season against Leeds. If you traveled there by train from London, what train company would you have been using? Question seven. If you were traveling to the valley in the early 50s, what form of rail transport might you have been traveling on that would not be possible today? So if you were traveling to the valley in the early 50s, what form of rail transport might you have been traveling on that would not be possible today? Question eight. What important events in Charlton's history happened it's very important as well. In the same year as the opening of the Trans-Siberian Railway, Railway, the founding of Las Vegas and the last horse drawn parcel post coach between London and Brighton. So what important event in Charlton's history happened in the same year as the opening of the Trans-Siberian Railway, the founding of Las Vegas and the last horse drawn parcel post coach between London and Brighton. In what year did all these events take place? Construction began on the Millennium Dome. DVDs were first sold in the UK. And Mark Kinsella was first made player of the year for Charlton. So what year? Construction began on the Millennium Dome. DVDs were first sold in the UK and Mark Kinsella was first made player of the year for Charlton. Question 10. Can you name the most westerly team in the current EFL Championship? The most westerly team currently in the EFL Championship. Okay, let's, um, let's give you a cat fact. 
CAC was recently presented with two EFL awards in recognition of its crime reduction project. I was there. The project has had a significant impact on more than 2,000 young people with more than 670 supported by being introduced to sport and physical activity and 351 involved in one-to-one -one mentoring. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, I'll give you a bit more to go over those questions while I answer some more questions here. Um, okay, you're just giving answers now, Bogdi. Don't give me the answers, write down the answers and then I'll just tell me at the end, okay? Um, Russell Mears, happy birthday. Oh, where are you going, Russell? Happy birthday to Russell Mears from his wife and kids. So happy birthday, Russ. Um, good to see you doing this. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Hi, Scott. Stephen here. Can I get a shout out for my mum, Jill, who loves your weekly quiz? Question for myself is what it was like playing overseas. Would you like to see more English players do it? I have to say, Stephen, it was, um, I, I look at it as the best time and biggest achievement of my career, thinking that you're going to a club um, one of the biggest clubs, not just well, not just the biggest club in its country, but one of the biggest clubs in Europe, with the history it had, um, a different language, not knowing anyone at all going in. Graham Soonis became the coach halfway through my first season, but um, knocking on that door, walking through that dressing room that, that day one of pre-season, I did not know a soul. And I just thought, you know what, just go for it. And I have to say, absolutely loved it. 5,000 people um, for the first training session. We had one pre-season game, uh, the Stade of the Luge, which held 120,000 people. And there were 80,000 people who turned up. They call it like a presentation game to see for the fans to come and see who's going to represent Benfica for this season. One game in pre-season. And there was like in the beginning, before the game, red carpet, lights going down, everyone mentioned. I'm thinking this is like being in Hollywood. What is this about? But incredible. I played Champions League for, for Benfica. Uh, loved it there, loved the food, loved the lifestyle, loved the people, loved everything about it. So, um, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. And I wouldn't have come back if I was with my wife then. Uh, I was single at the time. I, I probably would have stayed out there. Uh, let's go on to some answers now, shall we? Uh, in 1874, a famous or infamous annual fair held on St. Luke's Day was in Charlton, was suppressed because of Stewie Barmer. No, not really. Uh, what was the name of the fair? It was the Horn Fair, hence Horn Fair Road and Horn Fair Park in present day Charlton. Question two, a famous German company once had a large factory in the River Thames at Charlton making cables and telephone equipment. They're now more well known for making mobile phones. The name of the company, Siemens. And Charlton's first ground was called Siemens Meadow. Many of the early players and their families worked at the Siemens factory. The only British prime minister to have been assassinated uh, is buried in Charlton. It was C. Spencer Percival. Question four. The Thames Barrier in Charlton protects London from flooding. In which decade did it open? It was the 80s. It actually opened in 1982. Uh, question five. There was a blue plaque on a house near the bottom of Charlton Lane that many would have passed on the way to the valley for a Tory Smiths, also known as Italo uh, Svevo. What was his profession? He was a writer, but we will accept author. Question six, last weekend should have been Charlton's last game of the season against Leeds. If you had a travel there by train from London, what train company would you have been using? It is uh, L-N-E-R. If you were traveling to the Valley in the early 50s, what rail of transport might you have been traveling on that would not be possible today? Tram. What important event in Charlton's history happened in the same year as the opening of the Trans-Siberian Railway, the founding of Las Vegas and the last horse-drawn parcel post coach between London and Brighton? The club was founded that year. 1905. Question nine. In what year did all of these events take place? Construction began on the Millennium Dome. DVDs were first sold in the UK. And Mark Kinsella was first made player of the year for Charlton. It was 1998. And can you name the most westerly team in the current EFL championship? It is 
Swansea City. <laughs> okay, round four. Question one. In the sub, we've got non-European Charlton players here, by the way. So non-European Charlton players. In the summer of 2000, Charlton made the high-profile signing of Iranian international Karim Bagheri, although disappointingly, he only ever played 15 minutes for the club. In which other European country had he previously played? So in the summer of 2000, Charlton made the high-profile signing of Iranian international Karim Bagheri. He only played 15 minutes for the club, but in which other European country had he previously played? Question two, Joe Arebo was born in Camberwell, but for which country has he played four times, scoring twice? Joe Arebo was born in Camberwell, but for which country has he played four times, scoring twice? Question three, which lively young Jamaican winger played three Premier League games for Charlton at the beginning of the century? before going on to play for Rotherham, Southend, Barnsley, Bristol City, and Notts County, amongst others. Really good lad as well. Really, really good lad. Uh, funny. Um, good winger. So which lively young Jamaican winger played three Premier League games for Charlton at the beginning of the century before going on to play for Rotherham, Southend, Barnsley, Bristol City, and Notts County, amongst others? In which decade, question four, was Sean Bartlett born? In which decade was Sean Bartlett born? Question five. Brothers Sam and Akpo Soji were both born in Greenwich. One of them qualified to play for England, but which of them played four times for Nigeria? So brothers Sam and Akpo Soje were both born in Greenwich. One of them qualified to play for England, but which of them played four times for Nigeria? Question six. Multiple choice, this one. How many times has former Charlton midfielder Seng Si played internationally for China? So how many times has former Charlton midfielder Seng Si played internationally for China? A, none. B, 15. C, 66. Or D, 108. Question seven. Member of Charlton Hall of Fame, Stuart Leary, played for the club between 1950 and 1962, scoring over 150 goals. But in which non-European country was he born? So Charlton Hall of Famer Stuart Leary played for the club between 1950 and 62, scoring over 150 goals. But in which non-European country was he born? Question eight. Eddie Fermani was born in the same country, but did he but he did play internationally for a European country? Which one? So Eddie Fermani was born in the same country as Stuart Leary, but he did play internationally for a European country. Which one? Moroccan Talal El Karkouri played 78 league games for Charlton and was famous for getting critical goals. But did he score more or fewer than 10 league goals? So Moroccan Talal El Karkouri played 78 league games for Charlton and was famous for getting critical goals, but did he score more or fewer than 10 league goals? Question 10, final one in this round. Which Caribbean island does striker Lyle Taylor represent at international level? Should know this one, guys. Which Caribbean island does striker Lyle Taylor represent at international level? Okay, while you uh, get your answers right, give you a cat fact. 
CAC was the first football club community trust to affiliate an LGBT friendly team and also one of the first to enter the Pride in London Parade last year. It had 75 walkers in its group. Just as my dog comes in. This is my dog. Manchas, what are you doing here? Shouldn't be here. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go through a couple more, shall we? Um, okay, Izzy, proper Charlton, these railway questions. And Reese says some of these questions are ridiculous. Listen, you can't answer all of them. You get 50 out of 50, you are. Well, you need to get out more, but we can't do that at the moment, can we? Um, Bogdy, stop giving me the answers. I can't read them out. I can't say yes or no. Uh, actually, I can say yes or no, and it is yes to that one you've given me there. Uh, love life to the full. Hi, Scott. Who did you share a room with? Did he have any bad habits? Now, in the last few years, when you, when you become um, a youngster and you, cut, you go into the first team, you just share with lots of different people. Uh, so there's lots of, sort of senior first team where you just keep quiet, don't say anything. Um, but my, my main one was Carl Lieber. He, we were really good mates, um, became roommates. He wanted to be up all night. I actually didn't mind because I was a youngster, but, um, when I say up all night, I mean watching TV, uh, but he loved to lie in as well. So, um, I'm sure I was probably the annoying one out of the two because I'm, I'm not an early riser by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm pretty sure I used to get up earlier, uh, before him. But great guy, Carlo. Uh, let's get one more before we go to the answers. Rob D, you're giving me answers again now, aren't you? Yes, you're correct. Well done. Um, final one here, Talia. Happy birthday, Russ. And Talia, Kev and Ben. So, Russ, happy birthday. Hope you've had a great day. Uh, still plenty left of it. Round four answers. Okay, in the summer of 2000, Charlton made the signing of Iranian international Karim Bagheri. Only played 15 minutes for the club. He, which other European country had he previously played? It was in Germany. Armenia, Bielefeld. Sounds like a, a baddie in a Bond film, but Germany is the answer. Joe Arebo was born in Camberwell, uh, but for which country has he played four times, scoring twice? Nigeria. Which lively young Jamaican winger played three league Premier League games for Charlton at the beginning of the century before going on to play for a lot of other clubs? Jamal Campbell Rice, really good lad. Jamal, hope you're well. Question four In which decade was Sean Bartlett born? Was the 1970s, 1972, so he's a year younger than me. Question five Brothers Sam and Akpo Soji were both born, both born in Greenwich. One of them qualified to play for England. Which of them played four times for Nigeria? It was Sam. Question six, multiple choice here. How many times has former Charlton midfielder Zheng Zi played internationally for China? None, 15, 66 or 108? The answer is D, 108. Hall of Famer, Stuart Leary played for the club between 50 and 62, scoring over 150 goals in which non-European country was he born? South Africa. Nelly Fermani was born in the same country, but he did play internationally for Italy. Talal El Karkuri played 78 league games for Charlton, famous for getting critical goals, but did he score more or fewer than 10? It was fewer, eight. And which Caribbean island does striker Lyle Taylor represent at international level? And it is Montserrat. Okay, before we start the final round, a quick reminder that while we hope you've enjoyed the quiz tonight and that it's brought you a, a little light relief, we're also doing it to raise funds for Child Athletic Community Trust. If you have enjoyed the quiz, please consider making a donation. Even if you haven't, please consider making a donation. Normally, cats at quiz nights are £10 per ticket, so perhaps £10 per screen or team or just whatever you can, really. 
All donations will help fund CAC's response to the coronavirus crisis, supporting young people through this difficult time and providing emergency support in the community for the vulnerable and elderly who are self-isolating. You can donate online at cact.org.uk forward slash donate. And I think it's going across the screen now. Uh, alternatively, if you have been impressed by the information we've shared about CACT tonight and during previous weeks, you can set up a regular donation to support CACT now and in the future. That's at cact.org.uk forward slash our community. OK, let's get to uh, round five. I'm waffling on so much. Um, it's going to be Saturday night soon enough, isn't it? Saturday night's all right. Round five, the 1988-1994 era, the most classic era of Charleston Athletic in the history of the club, without a doubt. Question one, which second division club did manager Lenny Lawrence join after leaving Charlton in 1991? Now, I'm pretty sure I just signed a three-year contract with Charlton and Lenny wanted me to sign it. And within a couple of weeks, he went off to this club. So which second division club did manager Lenny Lawrence join after leaving Charlton in 1991? Question two, name three of the starting team who played alongside me in the Back to the Valley game on the 5th of December 1992. So three of the starting 11 who played alongside me in the Back to the Valley game on the 5th of December 1992. If you name all 11, you've got to get a bonus point for that. Question three, who was Charlton's unused substitute for the first game back at the Valley? So who was Charlton's unused substitute for that first game back at the Valley? I do believe as well. Yeah, he was um, not happy about being on the bench. Question four. Who scored Charlton's only goal in the FA Cup quarterfinal defeat to Manchester United in 1994? So who scored Charlton's only goal in the FA Cup quarterfinal defeat to Manchester United in 1994? Now, I don't know if you remember. Let's see if I remember right. I think we were second in the league at the time, what is now the championship. And um, we went up to, to Old Trafford thinking we're going to get a pasting. It's nil-nil at half time. Michael gets sent off for a foul on Kim Grant. Apparently, Sir Alex Ferguson just said to the uh, United side, just get them back to the Valley. Uh, Sparky, Mark Hughes, who I later played with at Chelsea, scored after 46 seconds in the second half, and they beat us 3-1 with 10 men. And after that, I think we only won two of the remaining 11 games, something like that. And I remember thinking, and really, this is the reason why I left Charlton. Um, I really wanted to go up to the top division with Charlton but I just thought year on year that this was our best year and we blew it we not only went from second to into the playoffs but we went outside the playoffs as well and I thought you know what my contract's up I've got Arsenal and possibly Chelsea in for me um I've got to make the break but it was a very emotional time anyway but <laughs> anyway uh, who scored Charlton's only goal in the FA Cup quarter-final defeat to Manchester United in 1994 couple of questions on me here uh yeah, in here. So one is, I played 205 League and Cup games for Charlton between 88-89 and 93-94. But how many goals did I score for Charlton? So I played over 200 League and Cup games between 88 and 94. But how many goals did I score for Charlton? A clue, it wasn't many. Um... Question six, against which side did Charlton score their first and only ever competitive goal on foreign soil in 1993? So against which side did Charlton score their first ever and only goal, competitive goal on foreign soil in 1993? Um, that's it, the Anglo-Italian Cup, that's, that's what it was. In that competition. Um, now, one of my youth team members, uh, mates, good mates, Stevie Thurlow, is listening to this, watching this, doing this. Question for you, Stevie, as if you don't know. Question seven. 
Charlton made their only ever FA Youth Cup final appearance in 1987. Who were the opponents? <sighs> I could give you a massive clue here. Um, I was a schoolboy at the time, and, and as we were going through uh, the rounds, Colin Clark was the youth team coach. I was 15 at the time, still at school. And I had to ask, it was normally played on a Monday, I think. And I had to ask the school for every three weeks, the Monday afternoon off. So in the morning, I'm doing school. In the afternoon, I'm traveling with the lads and playing in the youth cup. And, um, and Colin Clark really put his faith in me. It was, I was 15. There was another schoolboy called Paul Bacon. He was 15. He was a right back. And um, as I say, there were second year apprentices, 17, 18 year olds who he, he puts us in front of. Um, so to be part of that, to go all the way through to the final, arguably Charlton's greatest ever youth cup team. We got to the final. We should have won it. Uh, we didn't. But here's the clue. It was in 1987. We played at their ground and there was like 17,000 there, which for a 15 year old was absolutely ridiculous to be playing in front of that amount of people. But it was that amount of people because not necessarily because it was a massive club, but because they were playing, their first team were playing in the FA Cup final three days later, or a few days later. So that's a massive clue there. Okay, question eight. I made my senior Charlton debut at Selhurst Park in 1988 in the Simod Cup against which opponents? I bet you don't know this one, Stevie. So I made my senior debut at Sellers Park in 1988 in the CMOD Cup against which opponents? I didn't know this one until today. So far, nearly 900 players have played first team games for Charleston since they joined the Football League in 1921. When I made my debut, it was a landmark number. Didn't know this. Was I the 400th, the 500th, the 600th? or the 700th first team addict. So nearly 900 players have made their debut um, for Charlton since 1921. Mine was a landmark number, 400, 500, 600, or 700. And question 10 of Blue Eyes himself. My teammate Gary Nelson had some literary successes after he retired. He certainly did. Can you name the book that focuses on his time at Charlton? So Gary Nelson had a literary success after he retired. Can you name the book that focuses on his time at Charlton? OK. Uh, what have we got here? Simon, addict. My granddad spent 50 years at Siemens, never played for Charlton. <laughs> Don't know where to go with that one. Uh, he should have done. Uh, Bob, you're giving me the answers, mate. I, I can't say yet. Well, I can say yes or no, uh, but you have to top them up yourself. Uh, you're correct on the answers you're giving me. In fact, you're very good, apart from one. Uh, David Jarvis, thanks for giving up your time to do this. Scott, pleasure. What is your best Charlton memory? It has to be back to the valley. Um, I think I said this a few weeks ago that I put that game as the top in, in the top five of games that I ever played in my career. And I played Champions League football, played in an FA Cup final. I played in um, uh, Cup Winners' Cup, um, you know, Old Trafford, Highbury. But definitely, uh, even though there's only six, seven thousand there, it, the atmosphere was incredible. And just what it meant for the club, you, you, you didn't quite realise until that particular day. And it was just absolutely incredible. So that's definitely my best Charlton memory, along with um, along with making my debut, of course. Um, Neil, what were your emotions when we went up via the playoffs four years after you left? Have you ever regretted leaving in hindsight? Neil, that's a really good question. because uh, One, I was absolutely delighted, genuinely really, really pleased. Um, Curbs actually called me after that game and said, do you want to come back? And as much as I love Charlton, I was at Benfica at the time and we just qualified for the Champions League. So, um, and as I said, already said today that, you know, I feel that was like my biggest achievement 
um, being a success at uh, a club like Benfica in a different country with different language. So qualifying for the Champions League, there weren't many clubs that were, that were going to get me back uh, to England at that particular time. So no, I don't regret it at all. I uh, would have loved to have played for Charlton again at some point later in my career, but not at that particular time. Um, I bogged it. You know your stuff, don't you? Yeah. What a moment that was in 1994. Second in the league. Incredible. Definitely. Look, just before we go through the answers, thank you to everyone who helped write uh, the questions this week. As ever, brilliant questions. Probably the best yet, I'd say. Steve Clark, Stuart Court, Ollie Groom. Hope you're well, Ollie. Ben Hayes and Southers himself as well, Stevie Sutherland. Um, so well done, everybody. Let's go through the answers here, shall we? Which second division club did manager Lenny Lawrence join after leaving Charlton in 1991? The answer is Middlesbrough. Uh, question two, name three of the starting team who played alongside me in the Back to the Valley game on the 5th of December, 1992. Okay, in no particular order, Simon Webster, Colin Walsh, Bob Boulder, uh, John Humphreys, uh, Humps, did he play? Wow, was he? Was he, did he? Stevie Grit, Gary Nelson, Darren Pitcher, Stewie Barmer, John Robinson, and Carl Lieburn. As substitutes were Kim Grant and Alan Pardew. And unfortunately for Pards, um, he was the unused substitute for the first game back at the Valley. Uh, so, yeah. I don't think he was happy about that from what I can remember. Um, speaks to Gritty about that. Who scored Charlton's only goal in the FA Cup quarter-final defeat to Manchester United in 1994? My roomie, uh, Carl Lieburn. I played 205 league and cup games for Charlton between 88 and 94, but how many goals did I score? The answer's nine. Uh, so 171 league apps, six goals, eight appearances in the FA Cup, eight in the League Cup with two goals, four Members Cup, one goal, and three Anglo-Italian Cup appearances, no goals there. So nine goals in total. Didn't quite hit double figures. Question five, against which side did Charlton score their first and only ever competitive goal on foreign soil in 1993? Did I play in that one? I don't know, but um, I certainly was there. Ancona in the Anglo-Italian Cup, so Ancona. Question six, Charlton made their only ever FA Youth Cup final appearance in 1987. Who were the opponents? Did you get that, Stevie? You haven't even given the answer there, have you? That's because you're laughing, I'm sure. It was, of course, Coventry City. And just a few days later, they played Spurs in the FA Cup. And what a final that was. The Keith Houchin diving header, 3-2. Um, so a brilliant week for Coventry. I made my debut, uh, senior debut uh, for Charlton at Sellers Park in 88 in the Seamod Cup against which opponents? Sunderland. Uh, question eight. So far, nearly 900 players have played first team games for Charlton since we joined the, the Football League in 1921. When I made my debut, the landmark number was 500. I was the 500th first team addict. The most recent is the 895th, Matt Smith. Okay, my teammate Gary Nelson had a literary success after he retired. Can you name the book that focuses on his time at Charlton? Left Foot Forward. Uh, oh, what was the answer to question nine? I just, uh, question 10, sorry. That was question 10. I've, I've, I think I've gone through the wrong number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I see what's happened here. Okay. So we've, we've missed, we haven't missed any questions. Just the numbers have been wrong in the answers. That's all. So question, answer to question one, Middlesbrough. Answer to question two, a lot of players, which I'm sure you got. Question three was Alan Pardew. Answer to question four was Carl Lieburn. Answer to question five was nine. Answer to question six was Ancona. Um, answer to question seven was Coventry. Answer to question eight, Sunderland. Question nine, five hundredth. And question ten, left foot forward. Have we got anyone else? 
Bob D, yeah, you're giving all the answers, mate. You're giving all the answers. Um, Izzy Fraser, not silly at all. Thanks for all the answers. But look, thank you as well um, to everyone who's taken part this evening. Please don't forget to put your team names and scores in the comments below or email fundraising at cact.org.uk by 8 p.m. tonight and we'll announce the winners online later. Then straight at 8, don't forget, get outside, say thanks to all the key workers and all the great work they are doing uh, right now. Um, if you enjoyed this quiz, please make sure you check out the Charlton Live special podcast interviews between Steve Sutherland and Keith Peacock. I'm sure that's a fascinating one. Keith's got loads of great stories there as well. We're planning to make this a, a weekly activity for the time being. So we hope you can join us again next week. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, have a great weekend. Bye for now.